All right. That's all right. We can start now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, today we're going to talk about Lab 5 and a little bit about Lab 6. We're getting to the point in the class where we're interested in how classes relate to each other. And classes, objects can relate to each other in a couple different ways. And in Lab 4, for example, you created an automobile class. And that class really didn't interact with anything except the test class. The automobile class had in it a couple of instance variables. There is an instance variable for the tank size, and there is an instance variable for the miles per gallon. Now these instance variables you could initialize either through a constructor or via set methods. <clears throat> there was then a calculate trip cost. that accepted as arguments the price of gas per gallon and the number of miles that the trip was for. And then the, the method did the arithmetic of, you know, taking how many miles you have to go, how many miles per gallon it gets to cost the gas, and figure out how much gas it would cost for this given trip. All right. Now that we've developed this automobile component, we can plug it in anywhere where we need an automobile. All right? And that, in a nutshell, is what Lab 5 is about. In Lab 5, we're saying that we have a trip class. And the trip class has, in addition to a couple other instance variables, an instance variable for the number of days of the trip, an instance variable for the number of miles of the trip, and an instance variable for the price of gas at the time of the trip, the trip has two instance variables, one for an automobile and one for lodging, a lodging object. The, the thought is, is that you know, it might, be, might require some overnight uh, stay. Now, we're kind of used to having instance variables be primitives, like doubles or booleans or integers. But this is a case where one of the attributes, one of the qualities, characteristics of the trip is the automobile we're going to take on the trip. If I was going to talk about, you know, going to Columbus this weekend, I might say, well, I'm going to take a trip to Columbus. It's however many miles it is, 150 miles. Um, price of gas is 3.75 a gallon. Um, I'm going to stay there just one day, and I'm going to take my car, which gets, you know, 30 miles a gallon, let's say. All right. We already have a component for automobile, and that automobile class should encapsulate everything that we're interested in about automobiles. So none of the arithmetic of calculating how much the trip should cost, or the gasoline should cost, should be in the trip class itself. Because we already have that logic in the automobile class. We may very well change our method to calculate the cost of a trip to factor in things like the wear and tear on the tires, the oil, um, the wear and tear on the engine, and so on. We don't, have to, we don't want to have to go around and change a bunch of other classes to reflect our refinement of the way that we're calculating how much it costs to run our car for a certain number of miles. We want to make that change in one place, in our automobile class. And then anyone that uses that class will get the benefit of that change. Another way to put it is, when we look at the trip, it will have an instance variable for automobile, an instance variable for lodging, along with one for the number of days, which would be a, a double, let's say, or an integer, the number of miles, which is a double or an integer, and then finally the price of gas. Price of gas, we could say, is a characteristic of the trip because a trip is typically for a certain time frame and the price of gas is the same uh, for that time frame. In the automobile class, we pass that as an argument because 
the price of gas really isn't an attribute of the automobile. I suppose in the case of the trip, we could pass it as an argument as well. But the way I define the problem, I said to make it an instance variable. OK, so how do we calculate the cost of a trip? The cost of the trip is made up of two pieces. It's made up of whatever car I'm taking on that trip, how much it costs to run that car for the number of miles associated with the trip. That number added to the cost of the lodging. So therefore, our method to calculate the cost of a trip will look something like this. The method in the trip class will look something like this. Calculate trip cost. We're going to calculate the automobile's piece of the trip cost by calling the calculate trip cost method in the automobile object. And we're going to pass it the information it needs, namely the miles and the price of gas. We're then going to take and calculate the lodgings by doing a similar thing with the, lo with the lodgings object. The lodgings object should have attributes and methods that will allow the lodgings object to calculate the cost. You give it the number of days, it will give you the cost for lodging for that number of days. The trip itself doesn't do any of these calculations. It sort of delegates the calculation to the automobile and to the lodging class. And in that way, if anything changes about the way that we're going to calculate the cost of our mileage related to an automobile, or the cost of lodging, we make that change in the lodging class or the automobile class. We don't have to go through um, all the classes that use it. We don't have to go through the trip class. So the idea here, the key points to remember, is first of all, your trip class is going to have two instance variables, one for uh, we'll have several instance variables, but two of the instance variables will be, one of them will be for the automobile and one of them will be for the lodgings. All right. These instance variables need to be set. They can either be set through a constructor or they can be set through a set method. The calculate trip cost won't really do the calculation itself. It simply delegates the calculation to the other classes gets the sum of the, tri of the trip cost for the car plus the cost for the lodgings, and that's the cost of the trip. All right. If we were to change something about the manner in which we were to calculate the cost of a, a trip for the automobile, like to factor in wear and tear on the car, we could make that change in one place and we wouldn't have to touch the trip logic. All right. We could also add other components to a trip. For example, we could, we could have a list of meals that were going to be taken uh, while uh, on the trip. And in which case, we would bring those into the uh, equation and add those costs on when we were calculating the total trip. So what's your test class going to look like for this? Your test class is going to look something like this. You're going to have. To create an automobile object. And I'm going to assume I'm using the empty argument constructor, the no argument constructor. I'm going to do the same thing for my lodging class. Now, what I have to do is I have to associate this with the trip I'm taking. So again, I could either do that via a constructor or I could do that via a set method. Let's say for the sake of argument, I create the new trip using a null constructor. I'd have to do something like t.setAuto and pass it the automobile object and then a similar thing with the lodging. Now I'd have to write those methods, and those methods would be like any of my set methods. It'll take the argument and assign it to the instance variable. So at this point in the code, I have my trip object, and associated with that trip object, I have 
the automobile, and the lodgings that belong to that trip object. I can then now ask the trip to calculate its cost. And what will it do? It will take and ask the automobile, what's your cost? And then it will ask the lodging, what your cost? Add the two together and return the result. Now there's other properties that would need to be set here in terms of number of days and so on. Your test class will be a set of these sort of test cases where you'll create an automobile object, create a lodgings object, and you'll try all the different options. Remember, there's options that you can set the miles per gallon, you can set the tank size, you can set whether it's a premium lodging or not. You will want to do a mix of those to test all possible circumstances. However you create these, though, you will set the trips, automobile and lodging, to those particular objects, call the calculate, and then verify that the results are correct. So again, to summarize, I think the things that you need to do, the things that you need to keep in mind, the things that are a little different about this, is this is an example of one where one object has, um, as its instance variable, uh, another object. In other words, associated with each trip, there's going to be an automobile object or a lodgings object. And, or and a lodgings object. Um, these objects are instance variables just like the ones that we've been dealing with so far. The only difference is, is that they're an object reference and not a, a primitive like a Boolean or an integer or whatever. All right. What we need to do is we need to set those, uh, uh, those instance variables, again, either through the constructor or through our set method. Once we do that then, our function to calculate the cost is delegated from the trip to the automobile and the lodgings, the sum of those two then become the total trip for the cost. That's one way that classes can be linked together. That, and it's a case of one class uses another class as part of its job, part of getting its job done. For example, a trip uses an automobile. A trip you may use a hotel or other form of lodging. And when you have that sort of use, um, interaction between classes, one class uses another class, then that class will appear as an instance variable. And again, it's treated just like any other instance variable. It can be set via the set methods or the constructor. Then any of its methods can then be called from inside sort of the parent class, if you will. All right, the class that owns, the class that uses the other class. So I can ask within my trip. How much will it cost to operate this car for however many miles? I can return the automobile. Uh, I can you have a get function to return the automobile so I could ask other questions about it. All right. I hope that clears up lab five. Take a listen to this and if you still have questions um, we can talk about them. As far as lab six goes there's likely to be a different sort of interaction between these. In this case, we talked about one class using another class, a trip using an automobile, a trip using um, lodgings. In the case of the student and the schedule, um, we have students, we have in-state students, we have out-of-state students. We then have classes, some of which are lecture classes, some of which are lab classes. There's a different sort of relationship between those, and that's an is a relationship. In other words, a student, is, or I'm sorry, a in-state student is still a student. An out-of-state student is still a student. There's a different sort of relationship between a trip and an automobile. A trip is not an automobile. An automobile is not a trip. A trip uses an automobile. However, in the case for lab six, there's a different sort of relationship. A lecture course is a course. A lab course is a course. So it's not a uses relationship. Therefore, you're likely to use inheritance in this one. So what I would do as I'm reading through the description is I draw the start of a class diagram where I would draw all of the entities that I hear about. Very similar to what you might do in database design.
student in state, out of state, class, lecture, lab. Now there is a, is a relationship, so that would likely be inheritance. Now what's the relationship between student and classes? Well, students have a list of classes. Another way to put that would be as students have a schedule which effectively is a array list of class objects or course objects depending on what you call them. So we're seeing three different ways that classes can be related. There can be an is a relationship which suggests inheritance. The other two relationships where one class uses another class or one class has as an attribute another class or a list of other classes in the case of the course schedule and that's implemented in a different way. That's not implemented through inheritance but that's implemented by having the one class as an instance variable or an array of that class as an instance variable in um, the other class. All right, I hope that helps. Um, this is actually, I think, the third time I've recorded this lecture today. The first time I ran out of space on my laptop. The second time the audio was horrible on my laptop. And now I'm recording this. So I'm hoping the third time is a charm. I sort of wish I could piece together the best moments of all three of the lectures. But uh, unfortunately, you're stuck with this one for better or worse. Um, I actually think the one where the audio was bad was probably my best version of the lecture. So you'll have to settle for, uh, for this one. If you still have questions, then take a look at, at the times that I'm available um, and, and let's make arrangements to talk about it either in person, over the phone, or via email. Thanks.